वेलकम गाइज वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट प्लान साइंस क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी फोर द परसेंट रेशियो ऑफ स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन ऑफ अ सैम्पल टू इट्स मीन इज नोन एज सो इट्स आस्ड परसेंट रेशियो ऑफ स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन ऑफ अ सैम्पल टू इट्स मीन इज नोन एज सो लेट सी द एक्सप्लेनेशन द ऑप्शन गिवेन आर को रिलेशन रिग्रेशन कोईफिशियंट वेरियंस coefficient of variation since it has asked about percent yeah, ratio so see first of all what is correlation correlation it is a statistical relationship and it refers to the degree to which two pair of variables are related not two degree to which a pair of variables are related this is correlation which states about the relationship between the variable between two variable or a pair of variable second is regression coefficient what is regression coefficient that they are estimates of unknown population parameters and these regression coefficient they describe the relationship between a predictable variable and the re response like what relationship what kind of relationship is there between two variable okay like for example in linear regression coefficients are the values that multiply the predictor values now these regression coefficients they are used to measure the average functional relationship between two variables how much relationship is there between the two variables okay and here we see that one variable is dependent and the other is independent and it states about the degree of dependence of one variable on the other right so the equation for the regression coefficient we see as b1 is equals to small b1 summation of this xi minus x yi minus y and by summation of xi minus x whole square so here the yi in this equation is the mean of y and xi in this equation is the mean of x right so if i discuss about the difference between the correlation and regression what it will be like for example correlation tells us about that there is a relationship between the two variables it tells us about that there is a relationship between two variables but what regression coefficient or what regression tells us about regression tells us about how much they are related okay so i write here if correlation tells us about that there exists a relationship between two variables then regression tells us about that there is how or how two variables affect one another or how much they are related so this correlation and regression here with regression they shows cause and effect relationship like when one changes so the other also changes but this does not happen with correlation okay in correlation the variables move together so what we have studied that in regression there are two variables x and y in a linear equation so y is equals to a plus bx so there are two variables x and y in a simple linear regression right so this is a simple linear regression where there are two variables y and x are variables and here what we know that this y this is a small y so y depends on x that is this y is influenced by x and here y is called a variable dependent okay here y is a variable dependent which is dependent on x but x is here variable independent it is not depending on y okay variable independent or predictor 
here x is known as variable independent or predictor and the line of regression y on x it is expressed as y is equals to a plus bx right and here a is constant and what about b b is the regression coefficient b is the regression coefficient okay so this regression coefficient they are the estimates of unknown population parameters and it describes the relationship between a predictable variable which is x and the response correct here response will be shown by y and one variable is dependent which one is the dependent one this y is a dependent one other is independent which is x also it measures the degree of dependence of one variable on the other like how this y is dependent on variable x so this is about regression coefficient denoted by b i hope this is clear now the next option is variance so what is variance variance is a measure of variability right it is a measure of variability it is calculated by taking the average of squared deviations from the mean so the formula of variance will look somewhat like this say it is represented by sigma square is equals to summation of which is the average of the squared deviation which is this by the mean okay so here the value of ith element which is xi and mu is the population mean divided by capital m which is the population size so this we have calculated about the population variance okay so here population variance is what variance is represented by sigma square and it is calculated by taking the average of the squared deviation from the mean so how much it is deviated from the mean that is being squared by the population by the number of population or the population size okay it tells us about the degree of spread in your data the more the spread the more the variance will be in relation to the mean okay so in summary the correlation is the relationship between two variables are they related or not and regression is the mathematical expression about how much they are related and regression coefficient it estimates about the unknown population parameter okay and it describes the relationship between a predictable variable and the response and what about variance it tells us about the degree of spread how much the data is spread and the more the spread the more the variance in relation to mean so the last option is coefficient of variation so this coefficient of variation it is the ratio of the standard deviation to the mean so the higher the coefficient of variation the greater the level of dispersion around the mean okay and it is expressed as percentage the lower the value the more precise the estimate the lower the value the more precise will be the estimate and the formula here is this standard deviation by mean okay into 100 so standard deviation by mean into 100 will be the formula of coefficient of variation and we see that this coefficient of variation it should result in a lower ratio of standard deviation to mean okay so the better the estimate the lower should be the value okay and if this coefficient of variation if it's less than 10 it is very good and if it's 10 to 20 it is good 20 to 30 is 20 to 30 is acceptable and greater than 30 is not acceptable so among these four options what we found that the ratio of the standard deviation to the mean is coefficient of variation let's go back to the question 
so the question was the percent ratio of standard deviation of a sample to its mean is coefficient of variation understood moving forward to the next question question number 35 an alkaloid derived from autumn crocus that is used as an agent to arrest the spindle formation and interrupt mitosis is called as so the alkaloid which arrest the spindle formation or the arrest the mitotic phase or arrest the cells in the mitotic phase it is known as colchicin right so see these colchicin they are extracted from the corn of autumn crocus a uh, scientific name is colchicum autumn nail and it arrest the mitosis in the meta phase by interfering with the formation of the spindle fiber it interferes with the formation of the spindle fibers okay thereby it helps in retarding the division of the centromere as a result there will be no separation of the chromosomes to the anaphase in the anaphase there will be no separation because the chromosome are arrested in the meta phase of mitosis right so colchicin is the drug which arrest the chromosomes in the meta phase of the mitosis so as a result of which there will be no centromeric division and there will be no separation of the chromosomes clear next question number 36 starting material for wine making is so guys we all know that the grape juice are the source for the preparation of wine so let's see that grapes are the most common used as a raw material for the alcoholic fermentation and these grapes they are used in distilled liquor to make brandy and the wine is the product which is produced by the fermentation of the grape species and which grape species are used for the production of wine it is vitis vinifera this is a species of grapes which is used to produce wine moving forward to the next question question number 37 the chemical substance that reduce the mite population or kill them are known as so first of all what we need to know nematicides are the ones which kills nematodes acaricide are what antifidins are what and juvens are what so first of all sulfur is the oldest known acaricide and the sulfur in the form of dust or vetable powders and flowable formulations they are the highly effective acaricides and what are these acaricides used for they are used to either kill or reduce the effectivity of mites okay next is what are adjuvants so these adjuvants they are substances which enhances the immunological response against the antigen they enhances the immunological response against the antigen and what are antifidant what are antifidants so these antifidants they are a kind of organic compounds which are produced by plants they are produced by plants and also available commercially they are produced by the plants to inhibit the attack by insects to inhibit the attack so that they cannot feed on those plants attack by insects as well as grazing animals a 
understood and nematicide you all know that it is used to kill the nematodes right so moving forward to the next question but before that you must know that acaricides are the one which helps in killing of the mites so answer will be number d next is seed lot certificate color is so what is the color of seed lot certificate so friends first let's understand what is the seed lot certification what is the color of that so this seed lot certificate can be orange or green certificate and there is different significance for orange and green certificate for orange certificate this is basically issued when the sample is drawn officially from the lot under the authority of a member station okay it is drawn officially from the lot under the authority of the member station the lot is sealed labeled and it is tested for the quality of the seed for the under the same member station okay so again i repeat that orange certificate is issued when the sample is officially drawn from the lot under the authority of the member station from the lot sample has been taken under the authority of member station this lot is seed labeled and the, the seeds are tested for the quality by the same member station from where it is collected right when green certificate is issued it is when the sample is drawn officially from the lot under the authority of the member station and here the testing for seed quality is done by another country by the member station so there is one difference that the quality testing will be done by the same member station but in the green certificate the quality testing will be done by another country by a same member station in another country by a same member station right and a member station in the country where the sea where the lot is located and it is responsible for sampling scaling and labeling and dispatch of the sampling to the testing station okay so this member station is the one which will be responsible for handling all the further processes it will transfer the seed to the next station in another country so that that country will uh, test the quality of the seed and it will issue the certificate okay when it is has been tested from another country green certificate will be issued when it is tested in the same member station it is like the orange certificate is issued so guys sorry for the delay now the orange and green certificate they have the following information what following information they have that is the name of the issuing station the name of the issuing station the name of the sampling and sealing agency official mark and seal of the lot number of containers in the lot date of sampling date of sample received by the testing station can you see how minutely the data have been collected date of issuance of certificate testing station's test number re result of the test okay and this all these is then signed by the appropriate authority of this issuing station and they write that i certify that sampling sealing and testing have been carried out in accordance with the international rules for seal seed testing which is ista okay and this test have been made at the official station authorized by ista to issue international seed analysis certificate okay so this is all about the seed lot certificate orange and green certificate so answer will be orange or green in color right moving forward to the next question 39 the cultivation of trees and shrubs is called as okay so see first of all what is viticulture so this viticulture it is the cultivation protection and harvest of grapes where the operations are 
outdoors right now the another term is enology is the science dealing with the wine and wine making which includes the fermentation of the wines and this fermentation process is confined to indoors so viticulture is outdoors and the fermentation of wine is indoors the next term we need to know about is arboriculture what is this it is a science and a practice and it is about nurturing the trees shrubs other woody plants and how trees grow and respond to their environments collecting data at uh, by growing the trees in different environmental conditions how well they are responding in a particular environmental condition and these techniques are used by the arborist okay and the name of the technique is arboriculture so the cultivation of trees and shrubs are known as arbori culture understood guys question number 40 in 1845 the late blight of potato destroyed the potato crop of ireland was caused by a pathogen now this is a very common question we see it so frequently and this late blight of potato was the major disease of the potato crop and it is caused by the pathogen guys please tell me what is the pathogen name so you all are perfectly correct it is phytophthora infestans right moving forward to the next question 41 darkening of urine and arthritis due to the loss of homogentisic acid oxidase enzyme in human beings are the symptoms of the disease so whenever the urine which is very dark in color and arthritis due to there is a loss of an enzyme named as homogentisic acid oxidase in that case what is the disease what is the disease uh, there in the organism in human so alkaptonuria it is the disease and it is a rare genetic metabolic disorder rare genetic metabolic disorder and it is due to the accumulation of an enzyme or accumulation of homogentisic acid okay not the enzyme but the acid homogentisic acid so whenever there is high amount of homogentisic acid in the body then what will it will lead to it will lead to a abnormal condition to a disease condition and this is known as alkaptonuria okay and what symptoms do we see in case of alkaptonuria that there is the defect or there is lack of functional level of the enzyme homogentisic acid right so i write here that there is the accumulation of of this homogentisic acid and these affected individuals do not have the enzyme to break down this homogentisic acid right they lack the enzyme they lack the enzyme which is homogentisic acid oxidase which is homogentisic acid oxidase so there will be so no breakdown of homogentisic acid as a result of which the disease condition is alkaptonuria which will result in the dark urine or urine that turns black when exposure to the air understood so answer will be this alkaptonuria okay where there is a loss of homogentisic oxidase enzyme so there will be accumulation of homogentisic acid okay question number 42 a mycotoxin produced by aspergillus flavus strains when growing on groundnut and cereals is called as 
so guys the mycotoxin which is a fungal toxin produced by the fungus aspergillus flavus it is the aflatoxin question number 43 the virus which allows the satellite virus to successfully infect and replicate example tobacco necrosis virus is called as so those viruses which allows the satellite viruses to successfully infect and replicate those viruses are called as which kind of viruses so first let's discuss in detail about what are satellite viruses then we will go back to the question so these satellite viruses they are kind of sub viral pathogens and these sub viral uh, satellite uh, viruses they are dependent upon the replication machinery of their helper viruses okay so are they are dependent on the helper viruses for the replication machinery and there are four known plant satellite viruses and they are uh, so named according to their helper viruses okay so satellite tobacco necrosis virus which is given in our question satellite tobacco mosaic virus satellite panicum mosaic virus satellite maize white line mosaic virus and these satellite viruses they have positive sense single stranded rna genome okay and this genome in encapsulated within icosahedral virions right and the satellite viruses they are very small compact and they are used as a model for the virological studies for example the gene expression genome packaging and the virion structure next these satellite viruses they encode their own capsid proteins right they are dependent on the machinery for replication on their helper viruses but they encode their own capsid proteins okay and the name of these satellite satellite viruses are associated with their helper viruses after their associated helper viruses say for example this tobacco necrosis virus the species is tobacco necrosis virus genus necrovirus family tombus viridi so uh, from the helper virus tobacco necrosis virus the satellite tobacco necrosis viruses have been named so according to the so tobacco necrosis virus is the helper virus for which virus it is the helper virus for satellite tobacco necrosis virus so just a satellite is added in the front right in the prefix so see you and so the other examples can be explained in same way and these satellite viruses very important to note that these satellite viruses they depend on the helper viruses for their replication so on which viruses are they depending on they are depending on the helper viruses for replication and other essential functions okay but are dispensable for virus infection cycle and they influence the host range they helps in the transmission of the helper virus by the adaptation to different helpers they may induce outbreak of new devastating diseases okay their main ability is to alter the helper virus induced symptoms by either attenuating them or exacerbating the disease caused by helper virus alone so they are helping in turn they are helping the helper viruses to induce the symptoms right to attenuate them or to exacerbate the disease okay which is alone it was done by the helper viruses but when satellite viruses is there with the helper virus then there is the attenuation and exacerbating of the disease okay and they are able to produce the new kind of symptoms which are different from their cognate virus okay so the relationship between this satellite virus and helper virus it 
plays a major role in the elicitation of the disease. Okay, so host will play the major role in the elicitation of the disease. So together, the satellite and helper viruses, they can form new kind of disease and host plants play a major role in the elicitation or the removal of the disease. So here we read the question once again. The virus which allows the satellite virus to successfully infect and replicate is called as. So this tobacco necrosis virus it is the helper virus and this helper virus is also said to be as the activator virus right next is in which of the following crops gm varieties are mostly available for cultivation in india so for cultivation in india cotton is the most gm mostly available gm crop Next is, law of heredity was given by, so law of heredity was given by the scientist named Mendel. So we will be continuing from question number 46 in the next class. Hope this has helped you. Please like and comment and give your feedback and please don't forget to subscribe the channel. Your feedback helps us to improve and encourage to make more videos like that thank you so much the next question that is number 46 the phenomenon in which plant tissue of infected with one strain of a virus is protected from infection by other strains of the same virus so when a plant is protected from one strain of the virus and it can be protected from the infection by other strains of the same virus then this kind of protection is known as cross protection right question number 47 the selection process for balanced combination of genes in an individual or selection process for harmoniously interacting individuals in a population is termed as so it is saying that when there is balanced combination of genes in an individual or there is harmoniously interacting individuals in a population when these kind of selection is done then that is known as co-adaptation question number 48 an irreversible aggregation aggregation means clumping together and association of rbc's in groups of variable sizes and is seen as clot formation is known as so the irreversible aggregation which seems like a clot formation what is the phenomenon known as it is known as agglutination Okay, so let's see what is about uh, uh, catalasia, L-captonuria and Bloom syndrome, what these are. Let's see these also. So agglutination, this agglutination it is defined as the process of formation of clumps, right? It forms the clumps which is the irreversible process and this is formed by specific antibodies to the surface antigenic components when specific antigens bind to specific antibodies then this results in agglutination means the binding results in the kind of clot formation or the aggregation of these specific antibodies and antigens forms the aggregation which is known as agglutination okay now these antigenic components they are adsorbed adsorbed and absorbed has a difference absorbed is the process of absorption through the bulk phenomena like the whole surface works the whole part of the body works uh, or absorbing but absorb is a superficial phenomena that is the absorption will only from the surface this is adsorption okay now adsorbed or chemically coupled to red cells or inert particles right this is known as agglutination process where the clumps or 
uh, are formed when there is the interaction between specific antibodies to their surface antigenic components right so there are two kinds of agglutination direct agglutination and passive agglutination so see here so guys in case of this direct agglutination the antigens are already present okay the antigens are already present on the particle but in case of indirect or uh, passive agglutination or passive hemagglutination when rbc cells are involved it is passive hemagglutination so in case of passive or indirect agglutination here the test is done with the soluble antigen so in case of passive one the test is done with the here the test is done with the soluble antigens and these soluble antigens they go and bind with the particle at first later on the antibodies are binding to these soluble antigens right here the antigens are not present on the particle at first they are coated with the soluble antigen then onto these soluble antigens the antibodies bind so what is direct agglutination here the antigen is insoluble right so i write here again direct agglutination here the antigen is insoluble right and here what we need to know that this insoluble antigen will bind to the antibody and will form the aggregation or the clump known as agglutination right and these kind of direct agglutination process it is used for antigen detection right like for example uh, finding out whether there is cholera present or not whether there is salmonella salmonella present or not now what about this passive or indirect agglutination here at first coating antigens onto the surface of the carrier particle okay so soluble antigen coating is done on rbc say for example rbc coating of soluble antigen on rbc's okay it can be rbc it can be latex it can be gelatin etc okay now this is when here antibody is when put then these soluble antigens which has been coated on the cells they will bind to the antibody and they will also show agglutination right so examples where passive agglutination uh, test is done it is done to test uh, say for example for leptospirosis test say for example vidal test for typhoid fever etc okay the next term is a catalasia so a catalasia we already discussed in the part 1 of the video and this a catalasia it is an autosomal recessive peroxisomal disorder since the term catalasia is there which includes uh, which involves this catalase enzyme so this is uh, the disorder related to the peroxisomes where there is either very low level or there is a absence of the enzyme catalase a means not so what is not there catalase enzyme is not there and what is the role of this catalase enzyme catalase enzymes are involved in the breaking down of h2o2 hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen so when this h2o2 is broken down into water and oxygen it re uh, like removes the toxicity of h2o2 okay when Uh, so low levels of catalase of so catalase is not there then what will happen there will be the accumulation of h2o2 in the cell which will cause the damage to the cell now h2o2 is very toxic to the cells so this toxicity is being eliminated by the enzyme catalase so in case where there is low level or absence of catalase this h2o2 compound cannot be broken down as a result of which the person will suffer from the disease known as a catalasia and this is a inherited disease right autosomal recessive peroxisomal disorder next we come to alkaptonuria we discussed it uh, 
also now this is a rare genetic metabolic disorder metabolic disorder where there is the accumulation of homogentesic acid because the enzyme which breaks down this uh, homogentesic acid which is homogentesic oxidase that is absent okay as a result of which the homogentesic acid will accumulate which result in the dark urine or urine will turn black when exposed to air this we discussed already next is bloom syndrome which we also have discussed it is a rare genetic disorder like alkaptonuria and it is characterized by short stature a sun sensitive red rash which occurs near the cheek and towards the side of the nose and it shows mild immune deficiency where there is the person becomes susceptible to infection okay insulin resistance that resembles type 2 diabetes and there is increased susceptibility to cancer also especially blood cancer okay lymphoma and gastrointestinal tract tumors so understood what is bloom syndrome so what will be the answer let's go back to the question so answer will be agglutination where there is the aggregation of rbcs into clumps right moving forward to question number 49 the portion of a pesticide formulation which is the active toxicant so pesticide formulation the part of the pesticide formulation which is the active toxicant is known as so let's see first of all what are adjuvants what are active ingredient what are chelating agents let's see about all that so first of all what are adjuvants so these adjuvants they are kind of the drug we discussed about adjuvants in the previous questions also they increase the immunological response against the antigen so this adjuvant they are the kind of drugs and it is used to increase the efficacy or potency of certain drugs and this adjuvant therapy is used in cancer management in pain management and immunological adjuvant in vaccines are used another term chelating agents these chelating agents they are the compounds which react with metal ions to form the stable water soluble complex they compounds they react with the metal ions okay they can also be called as chelants chelators or sequestering agents and there are specific chelating agents which can bind to iron lead or copper in the blood and they can be used to treat high levels of these metals okay since they can bind with metal so these are used to bind with the metals in our body to treat the excessive levels of metals in our body okay next is active ingredient so this these are used in the pharmaceutical drug or pesticide and they are the biologically active component okay so these active component role is the main one which is acting as the toxicant or which is uh, serving the purpose of the main component to control the uh, to control the process for which it is made so see here so the component which is the main part or the active toxicant in the pesticide formulation it is the active ingredient next we go to question number 50 a line having the chromosome pair of one species which is replaced by a pair of chromosome from another species so here the chromosome pair of one species is replaced by the chromosome pair of another species it is known as so let's understand about it so these alien substitution this takes place when there is one chromosome replace the own chromosome of a species okay 
and they may be obtained from alien addition lines so addition when there is addition of one chromosome and alien substitution is that when chromosome of another species replace the own chromosome of a species right so this will be when there will be replacement it will be alien substitution so answer will be here b next we are going to 51 the process of adaptation of a variety of line or population to a new environment is known as so when there is the adaptation or hardening is when done so that they can live in the new environment this process is known as acclimation acclimatization so see here acclimatization it is where the individual organism can adjust to the change in the environment so that they can perform across a wide range of environmental conditions and this acclimatization occurs in a short period of time maybe hours to weeks and within the organism's lifetime compared to adaptation okay now there is a difference between adaptation and acclimatization adaptation is occurring or taking place over many generations but acclimatization is a sh uh, is happening in a short period of a time right so adaptation is what it is the change in the both physical and chemical composition of an organism and this is while acclimatization is only the physical reaction made so i write here that acclimatization is what it is the change in physical reaction but what about this adaptation adaptation involves change in both physical and chemical reaction and the change which uh, is due to adaptation is permanent while acclimatization or acclimation is temporary adaptation is a natural and necessary process for the survival and acclimatization happens when there is a small change in the habitat okay adaptation is related to the genetic changes which is passed on to the next generation while acclimatization may not pass to the next generation right and the next is adelphogamy it is a kind of sexual partnership between sibling eukaryotes and mainly seen in some species of fungi flowering plants or ants or in humans okay so this may refer to fraternal polyandry or a kind of incestuous relationship between a brother and a sister this is adelphogamy next we move on to question number 52 absence of pigment in skin hair and eyes of an animal or absence of chlorophyll in plants now this type is known as albinism when a pigment is absent it is known as albinism next we move to who is credited with the discovery of bacteria now this we all know from the beginning from the, our childhood that louis pasteur is the one who discovered bacteria am i correct guys so you will be able to say what will be the correct answer first let's see the explanation what other scientists have done antony van leeuwenhoek they used he used a single lens microscope and he made the first observation of bacteria and protozoa so understood it was not pasteur it was leeuwenhoek who first make the observation of bacteria and protozoa right and he was the one who helped to disapprove the theory of spontaneous generation of life another scientist named needham he established from his observation that microorganism do not grow from eggs and he proposed a theory of spontaneous generation okay saying that living organism develop from non living matter at the microscopic level 
Now next is Tyndall. Tyndall was a scientist. He's demonstrated for the first time that gases in the atmosphere absorb heat to very different degrees and he has discovered the molecular basis of greenhouse effect. Correct? So, here the Leeuwenhoek will be the scientist who discovered bacteria. So, what about this Lewis Pasteur? What he has done? He has given the famous term. What is known as? It is given in his name only. So, he was the one who invented the process named pasteurization. We discussed about pasteurization in our first video, which is the killing of the microbes and uh, prevent the spoilage in beer, milk or other substances. Right? And he was known as the father of microbiology. So what will be the answer? Who is credited with the discovery of bacteria? It will be Leeuwenhoek. Understood? Question number 54. A seed having a well developed endosperm or a Perisperm is called as. So first of all, what is endosperm? When there is double fertilization, when one male nuclei fuses with the two central nuclei, it forms the endosperm. And what is perisperm? Perisperm is the uh, remnant of the new cellars, right? The remnant of the new cellars which is present in some seed. So this is perisperm and here the seed which has well developed endosperm and perisperm these kind of seeds are known as albuminous seeds okay mainly seen in monocots next we come to the alternative form of a gene this we uh, see a lot this is an allele okay question number 56 the young leaves of terminal bud at first typically hooked in the plants okay young leaves got hooked finally dying back at the tips and margins are the deficiency symptoms of element called as okay so whenever you will find that the young leaves are infected not the older leaves whenever young leaves are infected that means it is due to a immobile element because if it is due, if it's due to mobile element, then there will be the symptoms seen in the older leaves. Because older leaves are will be transport all, uh, all the mobile elements to the younger leaves. And the symptoms will be seen in the older leaves. So whenever you will see that the younger leaves are infected, then the it is due to immobile element which is not able to move from the older leaves to the younger leaves. As a result of which younger leaf will show the symptom. But whenever you will see that the younger leaves are normal but the older leaves have the symptom that means it is due to the mobile element. Because all the elements have been passed on to the younger leaves. Okay. So whenever there you, you will see that there is a hook in the plants and this hook will a uh, result due to the deficiency symptom of the element calcium right question number 57 the naturally occurring allopolyploid which ordinarily contain two copies of each of the genomes and show normal bivalent formation are called as again i repeat the naturally occurring allopolyploids which ordinarily contain two copies of each genome and show normal bivalent formation. When there is normal bivalent formation in the allopolyploid, it is what? Let's see. So first of all, what is ploidy number? It is the number of chromosome sets present in an organism. Monoploid number is the number of chromosomes found in a single complete set. Okay? Number of chromosome found in the single complete set. Chromosome number is the total number of chromosomes in all sets. Zygotic number is the number of chromosome in zygotic cells. And haploid or gametic number when number of chromosome found in the gametes which is one set. Diploid is when the number of chromosomes of a diploid organism which will be 2 and tetraploid which will be 4. And what will be amphidiploid then? 
what will be amphidiploid so these amphidiploid are first of all are they sterile or fertile so they are fertile okay and how they are made up of they contain the diploid sets of chromosomes so they contain diploid sets of chromosome sets i said sets not set multiple sets okay so they contain diploid sets of chromosomes which are originated from two different species originated from two different species so they are formed from allo polyploid okay so they are formed from the union of two separate chromosome sets so that there will be the doubling of chromosome from two different parents making them fertile understood so the allo polyploid which uh, contain two copies of the genome and show normal bivalent formation and they are fertile because they are forming the normal bivalents they are fertile and since they are allo polyploid because they are uh, formed from the chromosomes are from two different species okay the chromosomes are from two different species that is why they are amphidiploid next we come to 58 vertisol is related to so vertisol is a soil type where there is high concentration of expansive clay minerals okay and mainly mono mont morillonite okay they form deep cracks in the drier seasons or years okay due to the presence of this mont a uh, morillonite there will be the formation of deep cracks in the drier seasons or the years okay so this kind of and this is seen where this is seen in black soils and here in a phenomenon known as argili pedoturbic turbation here there is the shrinking and swelling causing self plowing where there the soil materials are mixed itself where leading to the formation of vertisols and these vertisols have an extremely deep a horizon but there is no b horizon so these kind of soils where the a horizon is deep and there is no b horizon are known as ac soil okay another term this heaving of underlying material to the surface often creates a micro relief known as gilgai so what we learned about these vertisols they are the soil type where there is high content of clay materials namely what namely mont morillonite and which forms crevices in the drier seasons deep cracks uh, in the drier seasons or the years and here there will be the self plowing where the soil materials are continuously mixed by itself and these vertisols will have no b horizons and they are mainly found in black soils so these vertisol is related to black soil next is a general poison or toxicant that will kill every form of life is termed as so every form of life is killed by biocide because bio means can be any living organism so every form of life can be killed by biocide so let's understand about aflatoxin they are very important and we will get lot of questions from aflatoxins very frequently so these aflatoxin they are carcinogens and mutagens and they are produced by certain molds fungus named aspergillus flavus and aspergillus parasiticus and they grow in soil so this is a soil fungus they grow in soil decaying vegetation hay and grains and they are found in stored staple 
commodities like cassava, chili peppers, cotton seed, millet, peanuts, rice, etc. and in variety of spices also. And when there, when these contaminated foods are when processed, it was found that these aflatoxins, they enter the food supply and they have been found in both humans and pets, pet, as well as they are also found in the feedstocks for agricultural animals. So it was seen that the animal fed contaminate, uh, contaminated foods can pass the aflatoxin transformation products into eggs and milk products and meat also. They can transfer this aflatoxin to their egg, milk products and meat. For example, it was seen in the poultry feed that there is high percentage of aflatoxin is there in their meat and eggs. Okay, and particularly children are most affected by these aflatoxin exposure where it is seen that their growth is retarded, the development is delayed, liver damage or liver cancer can result in and it was found that these aflatoxins, they uh, do not have any deep exposure to the adults because adults are more tolerant to their exposure. But adults are also at risk. Okay. And these aflatoxins are, they are carcinogenic substances. The most carcinogenic substances known. And they can be metabolized by the liver to the reactive epoxide intermediate. So into the liver, they can result in the formation of epoxide intermediate or hydroxylated to become the less harmful aflatoxin M1. Okay, so aflatoxin mostly they are ingested but some can permeate through the skin as well. And what is biocide? These biocides they are the chemical substance which can destroy or deter or render harmless or exert a controlling effect on any harmful organism by either chemical or biological means. So they can be used against any to uh, prevent from any organism. Okay, they can control or to have the controlling effect on any harmful organism. If we want to uh, avoid any harmful organism, then biocide can be used. So a general poison or toxicant that will kill every form of life or any form of life, it will be biocide. Next is question number 60. The quantity of fat or oil which is produced from 1 gram of glucose. So 1 gram of glucose can produce 0 0.5 gram of oil or fat. Understood? Question number 61. The reproduction rates of different genotypes are commonly expressed relative to that of the genotype having the highest reproduction rate. This relative value is called as. So the reproduction rate of many genotypes of different genotypes, they are expressed when compared to the genotype having the highest reproduction rate. And this relative value is known as. So let's see. So guys, first we will have an important knowledge about distinctiveness, uniformity and stability known as DUS testing. What is this DUS testing? So this is the way of determining whether the newly bred varieties, they differ from the existing varieties or not. Whether they differ from the existing varieties within the same species. And whether the characteristics which are used to establish the distinctness means uh, the points in which they differ from the existing varieties in the same species are these distinct characters expressed uniformly or not or they change over subsequent generations or not. Are they stable or not? Are they uniform or not? Okay, so here this is the way 
uh, by which the new varieties can legally gain access to their market via the UK national list or for the granting for plant breeders right which is a kind of intellectual property right and this is designed to safeguard the substantial economic investment involved in modern plant breeding so that the investment which uh, a group of people has done to find out or to discover that new variety that uh, investment is safeguarded by uh, approving by getting the approval from the committee that will approve whether this new variety can be marketed or not. So this DUS test they are usually conducted in a field or a glass house for two successive growing seasons and here in this the morphological characters are recorded both on the new or the candidate variety and similar varieties in what is known as common knowledge so similar varieties and the new varieties that the morphological characteristics are recorded and sasa variety testing staff they are closely involved in the designing of these protocols so this was distinctness uniformity and stability so that new varieties can legally gain access to the market so several steps have been involved to check whether they are distinct or not, whether they are uniform or not, or whether their characteristics are stable or not. So in our question number 61, it is asked us about the reproduction rate, which is used to compare the, uh, which is used. So uh, the reproduction rate of different genotypes can be expressed by comparing with the relative value with the organism having the highest reproduction rate okay so having the highest reproduction rate that means that organism is fit so this relative value is known as the fitness next question number 62 resistance to stripe rust of wheat controlled by a single recessive gene was first founded by so let's know about each of the scientists in detail first of all the first one Biffen so what Biffen did he first demonstrated that the stripe rust resistant and which uh, followed Mendelian laws okay and since the time of the discovery by Biffen the stripe rust resistance had been incorporated into many commercial cultivars next scientist George Beadle and Edward Tatum were the two scientists who worked and uh, whose work has changed how we view the body and detect and treat diseases. So they were two scientists, George Beadle and Edward Tatum. Okay, they worked together in US just uh, for the background and they worked in Columbia University. And what they did, they worked in 1941 and they found one gene, one enzyme concept. What they said about that? So what this one gene, one enzyme concept is all about? Uh, it was worked out by George Beetle and Edward Tatum. And they were working on the experiment. Uh, on the They were taken the specimen red bread mold which is neurospora crassa okay and they showed that these genes they act by regulating distinct chemical events okay and they showed that one gene one enzyme hypothesis is true so this is kind of a story george Bittle had spent around two years in the morgan's lab where this where he studied about the genetics using fruit flies as a model organism. But in 1941, he worked with Edward Tatum and he, uh, he uh, then changed his model organism and has taken Neurospora crassa, which can grow on a medium containing just simpler components like sugar, 
biotin and inorganic salts okay and they found that uh, working together they found that when this mold neurospora crassa when they are exposed to x ray radiation there is the mutation which arises in occasional cells not all cells but occasional cells and this mutation affect the ability of the mold to form the organic compounds from the building blocks okay some are not able to form the organic compounds from the building blocks okay say for example some of the uh, cells they lost the ability to form to assemble particular amino acids and when these cells are not provided with these essential amino acids so these mutated cells when they are not provided with this particular amino acid then they will not grow so when we want those strains those mutated strains when we want them to survive they must have the particular amino acid supplied in the nutrient medium which they cannot assemble right now after the mutation okay and what they did after that they supplied a variety of compounds in the nutrient medium to see that which of the compounds that allow various mutant strains to grow and which compounds do not okay they supplied uh, into the medium several kinds of nutrient okay there's uh, several variety of compounds they have given into the nutrient medium to check that mutant strains grow in which compound and in which they do not grow okay so by giving by doing this process what they saw they can uh, they were able to find out that the sequence of biochemical reactions takes place in the cells which make necessary compounds like amino acids so they are able to deduce the sequence of biochemical reactions which uh, are seen in the cells to make amino acid okay so they concluded that the function of a gene is to direct the formation of a particular enzyme and when there is a mutation then the normal enzyme cannot be produced resulting in some symptoms which shows that there has to be the, the there is the deficiency of that particular supplement okay so whenever there is absence of particular supplement the normal enzyme will not be formed which results in the symptom of the deficiency of that supplement and they proposed that each gene directs the formation of one and only one enzyme and for this they got the nobel prize in physiology or medicine right so the uh, beedel and tatum were the first to found out and to prove that one gene will produce only one enzyme next scientist is benzer so benzer was working on the genetic control of aging process and he discovered mutations that cause degeneration of the brain okay or extended life span in drosophila so he opened the way to use fruit fly as the model organism to study the neurodegenerative diseases like alzheimers or parkinson so he was the one who used the or uh, opened the way to use the fruit fly to study the neurodegenerative diseases and he was the one benzer was the one who discovered that genes can separate into smaller units and the smaller units could recombine into a new gene called mutant okay he was the one making detailed maps of the internal structure of the gene so he received crafood prize for his pioneering work in genes and behavior again he won the albany medical center prize in medicine the awards we need not to remember but for, to have the idea we are reading this which is for demonstrating that single gene mutation in drosophila can affect the behavior okay so what did benzer do benzer opened the way to use fruit fly 
as the model system as a model organism to study about the alzheimer or parkinson disease or the neurodegenerative diseases also he gave the first detailed map of the internal structure of gene next what he did he used drosophila and said that a single gene mutation in drosophila can affect the behavior now another scientist named blakesley the full name is Albert Francis Blakesley he was a botanist an american botanist and what he did he worked on jimson weed the tura plant right poisonous jimson weed plant and the sexuality of fungi so these blakesley they used colchicin he used colchicin to achieve an increase in the number of chromosomes and he opened up the new field for the artificially produced polyploids okay so colchicin was used by blakesley to produce the polyploids artificially he produced the polyploids also his main work was on the jimson uh, jimson weed and sexuality of fungi so let's get back to the question question was resistance to stripe dust of wheat controlled by single recessive gene was given by biffen Beadel and Tatum, what he did, what they did, one gene, one enzyme concept. What Benzer did, uh, he gave or he opened the way for the uh, for the use of Drosophila as the model organism to study about the neurodegenerative diseases. He gave the map about the gene and what did Blakesley do? Blakesley, uh, he used colchicin to form artificial polyploids. Question number sixty-three: Individuals that has two or more genomes from different species, guys, which we have already done in number fifty-seven, which is having the genome from two different species, then it is allopolyploid. But if it's of same species, then it will be autopolyploid. Auto. allo means different okay 64 the growth stage at which more attack of sheath blight of rice is seen so it is the active tillering stage where more attack of the sheath blight of rice is seen question number 65 the disease which is not prevalent throughout the country continent or the world it is known as pandemic diseases we have discussed about epidemic sporadic endemic pandemic all we have discussed in detail in the first video please go back if you have not seen it please see that video also that is also very informative we have discussed the questions in detail number 66 the loss of vigor and productivity of clones with time is known as so when the vigor and productivity is of the clones are lost then it is clonal degeneration allelopathy we all know allelopathy is that when the chemicals from one plant inhibit the growth of the neighboring plant this is allelopathy thermotherapy is due to the temperature pathogenicity is due to the pathogens 67 so we have done till 66 in this video we will be resuming from question number 67 up to question number 100 in the third part of the video so kindly stay tuned subscribe the channel and click the bell icon don't forget to give the feedback this will help us to improve and encourage us to make more videos thank you so much guys